Hi everyone, Ted from LTM Simply. Today we're gonna talk about a topic that is very challenging to discuss amongst Christians. We're gonna talk about finances. That is something that many people try to avoid, but the Bible talks about it so much. Uh, one of the teachers at our local church describes investments as investments are a tool one uses to accomplish financial objectives and are not an end in end of themselves. One accumulates wealth by spending less than he or she earns over a long time period. One preserves wealth by following the biblical principles of diversification, professional advice, and a long time horizon. Investments speculation should only be done after asking the question as to whether this money will be better used by giving to a kingdom purpose, and secondly, can I afford to lose this money with no adverse child effect of my long-term goals? Using my investment to make a statement of faith is legitimate and may, may or may not cost me something in the way of return and or risk. So there are Bible verses that are attached with investments. There are so many out there, I'm gonna cover a few of them. And I pray right now that you guys are seeking what the Lord wants us to know about finances and let the Holy Spirit work through us and guide us when it comes to managing finances according to God's will. The main verse, well, one of the verses that I want to talk about is Hebrews 12, 11. It says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So we have to have a discipline and we need to train ourselves. All the stuff that we're discussing about is learnable, but many people do not want to train themselves. The next verse I would like to read is Proverbs 5, 5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. So that means, right, if we are focusing and we are being diligent how to manage our finances, we will be able to profit. Profit meaning we will have food on the table, we will have enough to give towards tithing, kingdom building, helping people in need, and enjoying time with the loved ones. The next Bible verse that I'm going to cover is Ecclesiastes 5.13. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of its owners or wealth lost through some misfortune so that when they have children, there is nothing left for them to inherit. Whoa, that is deep. King Solomon talks about it. So we're not meant to work on gaining all this wealth and hoard it, but in the same time, we need to be very careful how we manage it because we want to make sure, as the Bible talks about it, to leave some of the inheritance to our children's children. The next Bible verse is Ecclesiastes 11.2. This is my favorite verse when it comes to investing. Invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. And that is why when I teach and educate others, I always have a portfolio diversified amongst different type of asset classes because the Bible said so. The next one is, we're gonna cover Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's why when it comes to finances, if we seek our King Jesus first, 
everything else it shouldn't be with a mindset of greed or envy or you want more we have to have that in our, our mind that Christ is first we have to have the personal relationship with him and then everything else becomes secondary and the final verse this is actually I'm gonna read first Timothy 6 6 and I'm gonna go all the way down to verse 13 you ready for this quote but godliness with contentment is a great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it but if we have food and clothing we will be content with that those who wants to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs final charge to timothy so this is what paul is writing to timothy but you men of god flee from all these and pursue righteousness godliness faith love endurance and gentleness fight the good fight of faith take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you were made your god confession in the presence of many witnesses in the sight of god who gives life to everything and of christ jesus who while testifying before pontius pilate made the good confession i charge you keep this command without spot of blame until the appearing of our lord jesus christ which god will bring about in his own time god the blessed and only ruler the king of kings and the lord of lords who alone is immortal and who lives in a approachable light whom no one has seen or can see to him be honor and might forever amen i wish you guys the best have a great weekend a great week ahead of you and stay focused till next time